Hi crafters and welcome to Creative Moments by G. I'm Georgia and we are so happy that you're with us tonight. Oh my goodness, let me put on my glasses because I can look at the chat and I can see who's here. I see Patricia and Margaret. Oh my goodness. I know Patricia is sometimes out traveling. Are you back home in Oklahoma, Patricia? And Margaret, you're from Louisiana. All right. We're so happy to have you. If you are joining us tonight for the first time, well, welcome. We just appreciate you finding our YouTube channel. And if you are watching the rebroadcast, thank you so much for stopping by. We hope you enjoy this card that we have for you tonight. It's a, a special Mother's Day card. Now, you could use it for a happy birthday, but we wanted to make this really special card and uh, see if you really liked it. So we'd love a thumbs up. We'd love for you to subscribe and share our channel. We're working really hard this year to grow our channel, and we need your help. So let me just see what's going on over there. Okay, we are so excited that you're here. Now, we're going to use a couple stamp sets tonight because we're picking up sentiments from different stamp sets. But the main stamp set we're using is the Peony, the Prized Peony. Oh, this is such a beautiful flower. It is gorgeous. But you can use any flower that you have. Now, for this particular card that I'm going to show you, it, it really looks better if you have big flowers on it. Let me show you what it kind of looks like. Ugh, you're not going to believe it. This is a fun fold. It's a three-panel easel card, and it is so pretty. Oh, you're watching from home. Hey, Pat. Welcome. Look at this card. This is an easel card. But as you can see, it has an extra panel right in here with acetate. Oh my goodness. And then all you do is you just fold it up and you can send it right in the mail. Fits an envelope. You don't have to worry about it. And then they get it. And look at that. Now make sure you stay with us because in the end, we're going to show you another card. We did something a little different with the acetate, with the window. So I think you're really going to like it. So let's head down to the crafting table and let's get started. Oh, I see Scott Levins. He's on. Great. Glad to have you. So let me head down. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go ahead and put down a mat. Now this is such an easy card. I have already pre-cut this paper. And remember, I want to remind you that all the measurements will be listed over on Creative Moments by G.com so you don't have to take it down, even though I'm going to tell you what they are. That way you can just sit back and relax. Oh, hey, Gloria. <laughs> Levin, so happy that you could join us tonight. That is my brother and sister-in-law, and we're just so happy to have them with us. So... The first thing you're going to do is your base card is going to be eight and a half by five and a half, and you're going to score it on the long side. So you're going to put it in your paper, in your trimmer, just like this, and we're going to score at half an inch and then five inches. And this is the way it folds. This is so easy. You're going to go home tonight and you're going to make two or three of them. And we are simply going to fold this back. Now, use your bone folder to go ahead and, if I can find mine, and if, you know, it's so funny, I put it someplace safe so I wouldn't lose it, and it's not, oh, there it is. So go ahead and use your bone folder to reinforce that crease right there. And really, this becomes your base card right here. This is your base card. looks a little different. And this is going to be the front of your card. So this is simply cut at five and five and a half. And then once again, scored on the long side at a half an inch. Go ahead and use that bone folder and give it a really good reinforcement so that it lays flat. Hey, Gloria Wolf. Hey, Glow. So happy that you're with us tonight. Mary, so happy you made it. Now, the only other couple things you need are, you need some acetate. So we have two pieces of acetate, kind of hard to see. 
And the two pieces of acetate are four by five and three eighths, the larger one. And then for the window in the front, we simply do a four and a half by three and a half. So, now you will need something for the back panel. You don't have to put anything on the back panel. Let me show you this one. We didn't put anything right here, but it really looks pretty when you have something. So I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and add that. And I cut several pieces of paper because I'm not really sure what I want to use. So this back strip is simply five and a fourth by four and a fourth. But the very first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and let's cut our window. Now remember, this is the front panel. So you can cut with an oval, you could cut with a rectangle, a square, any shape that you want, but we're gonna go ahead and use a rectangle. And we're gonna get this just lined up just the way we want it. Now I'm leaving a little bit of room because I have a design that I'm gonna put right up here. So let's go ahead and just drop that just a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek at it. So that's what it's gonna look like. So we're just gonna take this aside. I'm gonna get this lined up and I'm just going to put a piece of tape there. Now I'm simply going to bring in my trimmer and we'll get our window cut out. That just is very quick. Now I have cut out a couple frames because I think that would be very pretty to use a frame on this. So let's go ahead and there we have it perfect so we're just going to put that to the side and just looking to see okay so the next thing I want us to do is I want us to go ahead and let's see we're going to move this to the front this tab because this is where we're going to lay our acetate, our larger piece of acetate is going to go right here. Now I will remind you that acetate is very delicate. So you wanna be careful with it. You don't wanna accidentally put your nail in it cause it'll make a, a, a line in it. So be very careful. And we are going to use tear and tape and we are simply going to adhere our acetate to the front of our card. So let's go ahead and get our tear and tape out. Once we have everything put together, we'll just go ahead and get this decorated. Now we have cut out some flowers, but I wanna show you how I used blends to color these flowers so, so easy. Now I'm just gonna crease that with my fingernail, and then I'm gonna use my take your pick tool, and I will just go ahead and take that right off because I want two pieces on there. So let's just get that first piece off. Now we're going to come back in with another piece. And this is right where we're going to lay our acetate, our first piece. Go to the edge. Use your fingernail really to get good contact right there. Use your take your pick tool again. And now we are simply going to lay this down flat. Just kind of make sure that you have it lined up just perfectly. So I'm just going to get that right there. Very carefully. Okay. Now let's see. Let's just make sure that's right where I want it. And it really isn't. I need to scoot it over just a little bit. There it is. Right there. Okay, so that is our inside panel that we're going to have. Now remember I told you that I cut the two panels out for the back, but I'm going to wait to do those to the very end because I don't know which one I wanna use. So now we have our easel, and now we're just going to decorate the front of our panel. Now this part that we scored, we're gonna fold it to the back. And now we're simply going to adhere our acetate that we cut out. And we're going to put it right in the back. So what we're going to do is just take some tear and tape and put it right around this opening. So let's just go ahead and do that very quickly. 
And like I said, you could use an oval, a circle as your window. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. But I really like the rectangle because it gives us a little more room to go ahead and add some really big flowers. Just going to come in with our last area and get that tear and tape right there. And now we are just going to use our take your pick tool and lift that right up. Go around all the edges. And we have picked some beautiful colors for our flowers tonight, for our peonies. So pretty. Now you just want to make sure that your acetate is completely clean and line it up on that back window and go ahead and just press it down. And there we have the front window. Now we can go ahead and put tear and tape on this just to adhere it to our front panel right there. So why don't we go ahead and do that because you really need it there to get it decorated. So once again, we need to use our tear and tape. You could use your wet glue, but this tear and tape really gives you a strong hold. And I think you would be much happier with it. But if you don't have tear and tape, you can use wet glue. Let's go ahead and just press that down. I want to remind everybody that Maudie is over in the chat room, my sister. We do this adventure together, and we have so much fun. And she is just there to chat with you and have a good time, answer all your questions. Okay, so we have our tear and tape added. Now we need to add this lip right here to this part of the card. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it sideways just so I can get it lined up perfectly. Just make sure. Okay. And there we have it. You can use that bone folder to go ahead and reinforce it and give you a really good crease. And so now we have our card. All we have to do is decorate it. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Now because it's an easel card, it sits up like this, right? You can see it from the side. So we will create a stopper right here to stop it. Yes, we connected two acetate sheets. Mm -hmm. Two panels. We have our panel in the middle that just is kind of free falling. And then we have our window that needs an acetate to it. Very simple folds though. I love this. We, we've seen a couple of these and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so easy. Our crafting friends are going to love this. So we're going to go ahead and I want to show you now how beautifully this stamp stamps. So let's go ahead and bring in our early espresso. And remember a tip. When you are working with water-based ink, you want to make sure if you're going to use a blend, which is an alcohol-based, you want to use a water-based ink, right? because it's kind of, you have to do just the opposite. Otherwise, they'll bleed into each other. So we have our water-based ink, and now we're going to bring in our blend, which is alcohol-based. And we have decided to use magenta madness and a little bit of the yellow. And what is so great about this particular stamp is that it already has the shading for you. So you don't even have to shade. You can shade if you want. You could bring in this light one. We'll do a little bit of shading. But I just want to show you how beautiful it looks, even if you decide not to do two or three colors like we've done in the past. So let's go ahead and... You can just color right over this and see how it automatically makes it look darker in areas. Oh, so beautiful. Oh my goodness. This is really, really a pretty stamp set. Now I want to show you what if you wanted to do just a little bit of blending, but you didn't want to do too much coloring. You could go over these dark areas, just over the shading. You don't have to worry about it too much. 
And now you can come in with a lighter color and just go around it. It gives you a little bit of extra shading, really brings out those highlights. But once again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And if remember, whenever you're highlighting, when you're shading, you want to go over the edges just a little bit to soften them up. And you can do that as well. See how pretty that is? So we are using this stamp, and I want to show you how beautifully this stamps as well. So let's go ahead and get our espresso again so that we can use our blends. Oh, this is such a beautiful stamp. Look at that. So pretty. And on this one, like I said, if you wanted to do a little bit of blending, you could just come in where they already have the shadows. That little bit of shading for you already. Maybe around the tips. And then you could come in with a lighter color and just get that blended. And it really just, oh, looks so pretty. We would come in and do our middle, a little bit of yellow. So it really adds to the highlights of the flower. Now let me show you what we've colored. We've colored these already. We've done exactly what I said to do. So we have that one. This one, we just went over one color. We didn't even do any highlights. And then, of course, oh, look at this one. This one's going to go on the inside. We have our leaves that we're going to bring in. And so now, we're just going to decorate the front. So, we're going to work on the front panel first. And on this one, we're just going to bring in some of our flowers. Just going to get them placed just a little bit. Now, I will say that the acetate that we're using tonight is not heat resistant. So, you cannot do any embossing on this particular acetate that we're using. You can, however, buy the acetate that you can heat emboss on. So, we're just going to bring this in like this. I'm just trying to get it positioned where I want it. And maybe a leaf right there. Okay. So what we can do is you can use wet glue or you can use uh, your tape runner. We're going to go ahead and just use a little bit of wet glue. Let's see, get that right there. Just kind of run it up the side. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this. Turn it. Bring this one in over here in just a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. Get a little bit of glue. I'm not going to stick it down quite all the way because I want to go ahead and put some leaves down there. Just kind of work it. Make sure it doesn't go over the card. And then we need our bigger leaf to come right in here right like that. So we'll just get a little bit of glue on it. Okay. Now, here's the outside of it. Let's go ahead and put that beautiful design. Now, we did this in our last video that we just created. We did a little bit of paper piecing. Oh my goodness, and it was so pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and lay down this Magenta Madness and then we're just going to bring in the cutouts that were created when we did this. So pretty. And remember, if you watch the last video, you really only need to put your glue on the tips of this little image right here. It'll stick down just fine. So let's go ahead and get that. Get it laid down. Make sure it's even. Okay, and press it down. Now the fun part comes in. 
That's right. Yes. Good idea, Maudie. Yes, check out our Pinterest account because we have all our cards on there. Now, to do the paper piecing, I'm going to go ahead and use the other end of our Take Your Pick tool. And I'm just going to put some drops of glue right here in the middle. And I'm going to bring in that paper and just do different colors. So let's start with green. And remember what I said in the last video. You want to make sure that you're on the right side of this because there are two sides. There's a flat side and there's a side that bubbles up. You want to be on the one that really has that dimension. Go ahead and put that. Now we're just going to start over again with our colors. Oh, I just think this adds so much interest to a card. Have you used paper piecing before on some of your cards? Okay, so we have that one, and now we need to bring in the Magenta Madness again. Okay. We're going to bring in the green. Oh, look at that. So pretty. Now, we cut out a Happy Mother's Day. We went ahead and stamped it. And then, let's see, we went ahead and stamped it, and then we just gave it a background. So we're going to go ahead and just put that right there, but we're going to set it up on dimensionals. So let's just get out two dimensionals. And get that right in the corner. And now, when you decorate the inside of your panels, right here, this one, you really need to see how it's going to look in this window. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of slip this back here to see where we want it. And I think about right there. Let me make sure that, yep. But I need to cut part of this branch off. So just going to get my scissors and get part of that cut off. And let's just go through the motion again to make sure, yes, that's exactly where we want it. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on here. Get that laid right. And it will, because you're using wet glue, you'll have a little bit of time to move it around if it's not right where you want it. Okay. You could use this, though, for a happy birthday. Oh, my goodness, for anything that you want. And once you do it, you're going to see how easy it is to create this. Now, we need to have just a little bit over here. So we have some leaves, and we have a little bit of a flower still right here that we could put with some leaves just to kind of get it where it's nice and colorful. And we have some flowers, kind of like you have three going up the side. I think that's very pretty. And then we'll decide exactly how we're going to do the back panel. Oh my goodness. Let's get a little bit of glue on that. And give me about an hour and I will have these dimensions listed over on our blog. So here we have this. What do you think about that card? Now, we didn't do anything to this acetate. We let it just be nice and clear. But remember, I said stay with us to the end because we have another technique to show you. So we have this, and now let's see what we might want to do, which of these panels we might want. I really don't know. Oh, I, I do like the stripes. Let's see. But look at this beautiful paper. Do you remember this paper, this DSP? Oh my goodness, it has that magenta madness. has a little bit of gold in it. Let's see what that might look like. You can't really see it that much, but it's just a hint of color so that when you open it up, you can see it. So... 
I don't know. I think the gold might take away from this. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this one down with a little bit of glue. So you just open that fold up, get it laid down. And now the only thing we have left to do is create our little stopper that goes right here. And that's so easy to create. Let me show you how to do that. To begin with, we have a punch we're going to use. This Banners Pick-A-Punch is wonderful. And it actually cuts paper in one inch, three-fourths inch, and one inch, in a half an inch. So what we've done is we simply cut our strips four inches in length, we cut one inch, three-fourths, and a half. And all we have to do is simply cut the ending on it. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and just push this right into our punch. Right where we need it. Oh, I just love it. Of course you can do it yourself, but I love how this gets it right every time. It's so pretty. So we have that one. Now this one falls right into the groove for the 3 fourths inch. Go ahead and get that where it needs to be. That one, and now the last one that we went ahead and stamped the sentiment. Let's go ahead. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this laid, let's see, uh, with dimensionals. So we have our little bits right there. And I'm going to get my dimensionals and get that laid down. So we'll start with our big green one and we will simply lay down our flirty flamingo. So let's go ahead and get some dimensionals. And why it's important to give you some height on the stopper right here is that's what holds your easel card and helps it stand up. So you want to make sure, you know, that you do use those dimensionals because that will help you stand up your card. Okay. Now we're going to use uh, some dimensionals for the back of this one. Turn the pink paper around. Uh-oh, did I miss something? This one should have been turned around. Oh, well, too late. <laughs> I get so busy making the card, I don't read the comments. Oh, my goodness. Okay, would have been a great idea, Glow. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just lay this right in the center. Yes, I can see where that should have been stamped a little differently, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this, and now we're simply going to lay it flat on the card. So we're going to get our glue, just get some glue, and get it right here. And you need to back it up about a quarter of an inch. And there we have it. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we have it. Can't really see it. I'm going to show from the side, though, so you can see what it looks like. You can see the acetate that kind of falls in the middle. Here's what the front looks like. Let's do it this way. Here's what the front looks like. Oh, so pretty. I love that. <laughs> and then when you lay it flat and you set it up on your desk, of course, that acetate right in the middle just lays exactly where it's supposed to. And this stop gap right here really works well. So we have this one that we didn't decorate the back at all, right? So we just left it blank, but it's still very pretty. And it works the same way. So, uh, Maudie said, remember, make where they can see it. So, <laughs> here you can kind of see how it looks, right? I'm going to go ahead and stand this one up. Now, I want to show you another trick that I tried this afternoon. Now, 
I'm not sure if we like it all that much, but we took the acetate and we actually ran it through a dry emboss folder. And I don't know if, yes, you can see it, yeah. And just to kind of give it some texture, and I think it's pretty, but I think you can't see the flowers quite as well. So here are our cards. You can see them sitting up. This is kind of what they look like right there. And you know, Glow, it is a great fold because it's so easy, right? So which one is your favorite? Here we have the pink one with these beautiful flowers. And we did dry emboss this. Then we have the one that we created tonight this one i really love this paper piecing into this image it is so much fun and then we have the one that we didn't really put anything on the back but so pretty and so vibrant let us know which is your favorite and i can't really turn them on their side because they won't stay i guess i could do that and what's so nice about these cards is they actually fold up so you can send it in an envelope, fits just perfectly. And then they'll figure out that they're going to just set up just like that. Oh, that's gonna be so much fun when you do that, Mary. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Might be above your skill level. <laughs> well, we'll tutor you. <laughs> Well, what do you think about these cards? We love this fun fold. This three panel easel is so easy to make because you really only have a base card and then a small front. So it's really easy. We just appreciate everyone spending their time with us tonight. Uh, remember, give us a thumbs up. We sure would appreciate. If you haven't subscribed, help us grow our channel. Share with all your crafting friends. Remember, we're gonna be live next week on Tuesday and Thursday. Coming in April, we have our card challenge that we hope everyone joins and has a little bit of fun with us. We want you to go out and have a fantastic weekend. The pink one is your favorite. <laughs> and we just appreciate you so much for watching. Go out, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.